It's hard to believe, but Fifth Gear is now 20 years old. So to celebrate the occasion, we've come up with some rather special shootouts involving cars that got us all excited back in 2002, and then putting them up against them modern day counterparts around the track. This time we've dug out old and new versions of the world's most recognisable and most enduring sports car, the Porsche 911. Two decades ago, we got our hands on what was then the flagship model, the Turbo. It was a proper monster that saw off virtually every other supercar of the era. So not surprisingly, we liked it a lot. But just how good is it today? For example, how would it stack up against a modern 911? To find out, we thought we'd put it up against this, a 2022 Carrera. Yes, it's the cheapest, least powerful model you can currently buy. In other words, has the 911 improved so much that the entry-level model can beat the creme de la creme version from way back when? We'll start with the turbo. Incredibly, the Porsche 911 is nearly 60 years old, and over that time, it's been constantly evolving. However, to the untrained eye, you know, one 911 looks pretty similar to another, so Porsche, give it a generation code. This 2002 car is a 996 model, and I should know because I used to own one. Mine was in blue, and I loved it, but it wasn't the prettiest 911. They did away with the round headlights, and they went for these odd-shaped lights which cut into the bonnet. Some people refer to them as fried eggs, but, God, it drives well. Yeah, I mean, this turbo's done, what, 39,000 miles? It feels so tight. The one part about all of them which has remained actually epic throughout the whole range is the steering, and this is, you know, no exception. I mean, it's beautiful. It's pinpoint accurate. The cabin is so airy. I've got great visibility. The seating position is great. I feel under the steering wheel, I feel connected. Gear change is really lovely. I mean, it's just great. And apart from the styling, the 996 made its mark for other reasons, because the famous flat-six air-cooled engine had been replaced by a flat-six water-cooled one. Horror of horrors. But Porsche, well, they had no choice. Performance of the air-cooled engine. Do you know what? It just kind of reached its limit. It also came under pressure from, you know, emissions and noise legislation. It just simply had to go. In fact, the only parts which were carried over from the last of the air-cooled cars was the suspension and the gearbox. But the gains in performance were considerable, particularly when this was written on the back. For starters, behind me I've got a Quinn Turbo 3.6 litre, kicking out 420 horsepower. In a body weighing 1,540 kilos, and with a slippery drag coefficient of just 0.3, that was good enough to reach 189 miles an hour. Yeah, with these really fat, grippy tyres and four-wheel drive system, yeah, this got to 60 in a tad over four seconds. Rapid. But now, a little word of warning. For years, you know, 911s had a bit of a sting in the tail. And that is, you know, rear engine, the heavy bit, is right out the back. <laughs> and uh, you know, if you ever went over the limit and the rear started to move around, you really had to be on your A-game. Because if you overcorrect a slide and they snap back, they can spit you off the other way. By the time this car came along, Porsche had found some clever software to calm things down just a bit. However, in the rain, give it too much, she'll bite you. Fortunately, the track is fairly dry today, so I can crack on. Concentrate, get the power on. OK, time for a hot lap. Start the one. A little bit of understanding. JP Powell. A little wag of the tail, nice. Ooh, ooh, ooh. It's bloody quick, I'll tell you. Twenty years 
hold. Oh, it's moving. Is she's floating? <laughs> right. Stop the watch. The 911 Turbo crosses the line in 47.79 seconds. Time for the upstart. So, welcome to the 2022 Porsche 911. Anyone want to have a guess what the model designation is? Well, in a moment of total clarity, Porsche named this the 992. That's a lower number than the car I've just driven. And in case you were wondering, there's no apparent logic to the numbering system. Porsche seemed to just pick a code at random. But never mind that, what's a modern day Carrera all about? For starters, this entry level model will cost you £87,000, which interestingly enough is exactly what the turbo cost way back when. For that, you get 385 horsepower, so 35 less than the turbo. However, it's 60 kilos lighter, so it reaches 62 in exactly the same 4.2 seconds. And how does it produce this power? Well, it might not be badged a turbo, but that doesn't mean to say it's normally aspirated. Its 3-litre flat 6 has got twin turbochargers on, just like the original turbo. Listen to this engine, listen. Oh, my God, it's just mega. Now, this car is rear-wheel drive, but that doesn't mean that it doesn't put its power down effectively because it's, it's quite a lot of, you know, space age electronics in here to assist and also weight distributions better than it used to be. It does give a really pure feel when driving it. You've got to think about it, particularly if you've got traction control turned off. But it's not edgy. It just needs a little bit of thought, which is part of the fun, eh? It's absolutely beautiful to drive. It's precise. It's got amazing grip. The brakes are phenomenal, I have to say. Almost perfect. It's very difficult to even fault anything on this car. Everything just works so beautifully. I tell you what, it's quick, it's really quick. But will it be quicker than the turbo? Predictions. I mean, it's going to be a bit better everywhere. Anyway, let's give it a go. Right. Let's start the watch. Incredibly, by the first checkpoint, the Carrera is already 1.3 seconds in front. Ooh, ooh, ooh. And by the second checkpoint, that lead has stretched to 2.3 seconds. Oh. It's definitely quicker. Stop the watch. The Carrera crosses the line in 44.73 seconds, a full three seconds quicker than the turbo. That's massive considering our track is under a mile long and just goes to show how far the 911 has come in 20 years. The 996 Turbo is an iconic car, but if it's fast you're after, well, then there's no substitute for younger legs. Don't forget, if you like what you see, remember to click the subscribe button for the Fifth Gear YouTube channel to be first to see our latest content. And maybe drop us a comment below if there's a shootout that you're dying to see.